Hey, it's out. Book three of Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth, which is all one book. Don't be confused. And that means that when I finish recording this, I can finally read Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth, which I have a copy of, but I'm like, well, like, I better not read this midway through this playthrough, or suddenly it becomes, it goes from being blind blind to being questionably blind? Because I kind of know one version of the story, but this one's a choose-your-own-adventure hybrid thing that also changes stuff regardless, perhaps, or whatever. Although right now I'm really into, ga uh, not Game of Thrones, uh, The Witcher, so I don't know if I how quickly I'll diverge to find it now. So we started off with From the Ashes, the story of a wannabe, uh, well not a wannabe builder, but a builder that was seeking a dream project to build a church, and then the wild boy he adopted that burned down in the church. Convenient. But then, he, but then while he's getting his wishes, he dies. That was unexpected. You don't expect what seems like the main character to die halfway through, but I think that, that may have been a bit of a, a red herring as far as main characters go, because it does seem to be more about the couple by the time you read by the end of Sowing of the Wind and uh, the Tom Builder who seems so central at first as dead, but fittingly, following his death, the story structure also loses its central pillar, and people are wandering around and leaving, and you don't know where things- and you, you actually don't know where things are gonna go next at that point. So I'm curious to see what these final six chapters have in store, and what, what specific ending or final state I may be creating for myself with my decisions. The White Ship. She was one of the fastest vessels that was ever built. The man who should be king of the English now, the son of King Henry, was on board when she sailed off. And with the prince there were 140 knights and many nobles, all on their way from Normandy to England. They say the ship hit the rocks, and then a fire broke out. Even before the White Ship had departed, the prince and his men had begun to drink and get violent. Monks that were meant to bless the voyage were then forced to disembark. Some say the ship had been cursed. The king's son and many of his family were pulled down into the Black Sea that night. You're forgetting one important detail. Not only these monks, but also Stephen of Blois, the king's nephew, left the ship before it embarked. They say he got ill. That old rumor. The same Stephen who calls himself the king of the English now. What? That cannot be a coincidence. Yes, it can be. Of course he's king now. He survived. He is the king's nephew. What do you think, my lord? I think Stephen is a clever man. Clever enough to have his whole family perish. But why he would want to rule that godforsaken rock, I will never understand. What makes you say that? I love my country. Then why are you leaving? Well, because I want to see something new. I'll tell you what you're going to see. A proper country, where people know how to behave. What about you? Why are you leaving? I had no reason to stay. Really? Huh. Uh, I, I guess I should stay out of other people's business. Forgive me. You English do talk a lot, don't you? I just don't know how to feel about leaving my country for the first time. I mean, how should anyone feel? You'll see what happens. I don't know. Maybe I'm just running away. Ooh. You should all get some rest. It will not be long now till we reach Sherbrooke. Thank the Lord, I can't wait to be back.
I briefly had the thought that we'd gone back in time to when Jack was just a child. But no, this, there's a new child in the story. In the late summer of 1142, I had left my home country, England, for good. My old life lay in shambles, as did my former home of Kingsbridge. Having failed both my friends and family, I had set out to find my baby's father, the man I still loved with all my heart, Jack Jackson. And so early one morning in July, I finally arrived on the shores of Normandy with nothing on me but a pouch of coin and a young, curious face yet unnamed, who was just as unfamiliar to this new world as was I. Right, you're Aliena. I thought, wow. This is the kind of whiplash that happens when we have a break between every book because they didn't come out all at once. So I'm like, oh, that's not Jack's mother. That's... <laughs> I had it... I had it in my head that I gave the baby to Jack's mother or something. So I thought that was Jack's mother on the boat leaving or something, but no, that's Aliana. I... I could have done with a recap, I suppose. The sinking of the white ship, 1120. The white ship was one of the fastest ships of its time. It was steered by the son of the captain of the Mora. The ship that brought William the Conqueror from Normandy to England when he invaded England in, in 1066. Like his father before him, the captain of the White Ship gladly offered his vessel to many members of the royal household of King Henry for passage on their travel from Normandy to England to visit the king. But like all of the poor souls who went aboard the ship, the captain did not survive the voyage. In the dark of night, the ship hit rocks and a fire broke out. The ship was dragged down into the dark abyss of the sea, and with it, many of the king's heirs. Stephen Blois was, Blois was <laughs> meant to be on board as well, but it is said a sudden sickness caused him to leave the ship before it set sail. That November night, as the white ship sank, Stephen became the last remaining male heir to the English throne, and thus, some claim he was responsible for the sinking. Or he was just starring in a prequel to uh Final Destination. That'd be a weird movie. I took the first ship in the morning. Had to get away as fast as possible. This is a significant change in setting. Alright, there's a lot of fighting for that castle. The ship wouldn't land there. I recognize those tools. A mason like Jack. I have the thinking about Jack dialogue option. I won't give the baby a name until I've found Jack. The Amor. Father's Dagger. How could he make us swear that oath? So I still have Father's Dagger for the oath. I still have the baby. I have the book. And I have thoughts of Jack as my inventory. You're still here. Oh, it's you. 
I'm just trying to get my feet used to good solid ground again. The last bit of our voyage wasn't exactly my pint of ale. That hammer you're carrying, do you happen to be a mason? Actually, I am. You have a keen eye, mistress. I guess I just know a mason when I see one. To be honest, I haven't been one long. Just finished my apprenticeship in Salisbury. Before that, I used to shear sheep with my parents, but I guess that wasn't really for me. Father still hates me for leaving, though. I left my old life as well. Scary, isn't it? To start off fresh and all that. Well, you definitely sound more excited than scared. Oh, I am excited. Wouldn't anyone be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. What will you do to find work here as a mason? Don't know. That's for me to find out. All I heard was that the wages are better over here. So you'll just travel from town to town and look for employment? Right. And I'll start in Lassay. A fellow mason told me about the abbey there. He said these Normans build their churches quite differently than we do back home. I need to see that with my own eyes. Maybe learn a thing or two. Do many Masons go to Lassay? Ah, I don't know. It's really just a tiny town. The Mason who told me just happened to do some repairs there once. It's likely he told others as well. I'm looking for someone. A red-haired Mason called Jack Jackson. He came to France about a year ago or so. A fellow Mason? Great. Unfortunately, I wouldn't know a thing. After all, I just arrived here with you. I know. But should you meet someone like that on your journey? Tell him Aliena of Shiring is looking for him. All right. Jack Jackson. I'll keep an eye out for you. Thank you. Have a safe journey. Oh, thank you. You too. I was going to say, he's not exactly going to be able to get the message back to you because I, I, the chances of us seeing each other again is not great. But we have a lead now. The Abbey and Lassay. Oops. Kind of awkwardly clicked over there. I was only tabbing out to change the audio a little bit on my end. So we have some lead. I don't really think I need to show him the baby. <laughs> hmm. We're in Cherbourg. Oop. Yeah, not Jack, just another redhead. For a moment I thought, but it's not him. They're bargaining for passage. Doing business with the English must pay. We could check with whoever the hell this is. Good day. I am looking for someone. A traveler who came through here last summer. Hush now, I need to talk to this man. Looks young. He was born at the beginning of summer. What's his name? I haven't given him one yet. You should. He needs to know who he is. Makes growing up a lot easier. You said you're looking for someone. The man I'm looking for looks a bit like you, actually. <laughs> a bit more boyish, though. So he has red hair, but no beard. Well, I don't know every redhead around these parts. There are quite a few of us. Most of my family here in Cherbourg is ginger. Oh, his name is Jack Jackson, and he is a mason. Hmm. No. No, sorry. I haven't seen him. And I come here every day. Maybe a May saw him. She helps the sailors get their cargo to the nearby towns. Carries travelers, too. I'll ask her. Well, thank you. Another lead once again, and now he must die. There can only be one, Jack. Coachwoman, that might be her. She appears to be her coach. She must know her way around France. Hi. 
Hey, you. That's quite a bundle you got there. Where are you headed? Have you seen a red-haired mason? You must have landed here sometime late last summer. <laughs> Another ginger in Normandy? I wouldn't have noticed, even if he was carrying a hammer instead of a fishing rod. Maybe you should ask someone in Barfleur. That's where all the travellers come through, the pilgrims and kings. Their lot rarely lands in Cherbourg, with the fortress passing back and forth between Stephen of Blois and Geoffrey of Anjou. Why you even came to Cherbourg in the first place baffles me. It was the earliest ship I could get. You must be in some hurry, madam. Let's just say I needed to get away before I changed my mind. Fine with me. Who am I to judge? Maybe in Barfleur someone knows Jack. Been hearing about more and more places that aren't here. Apparently this place is a total waste of time, is the takeaway so far. Do you know the road to Lesse? Been there, seen it. But I hope you're not planning to go there on foot. Tell you what, you give me some coins and I'll treat you to me wagon. You can even change your destination once we're on the road, what do you say? What other routes are there besides going through Barfleur? Oh, I don't know, really. You need to ask the locals about that. But Barfleur sounds like a good place to start. Shake my hand and I'll take you there. All right, take me out of town. All right, where do you need to be? We'll give it a go then. We're just in a whole new... This is a stark change. So I can go to Lesse or Barfleur. I'm really torn. This is just a place that builders might go to. Not the strongest lead ever. Whereas this would give this is the closest location. It's like right next door practically. And would be a place to get more leads because it's a main port into France and could give us more information. And then we could potentially check out places like let's say and also maybe more locations added as a result, perhaps. We went to Barfleur, a scenic port town built on granite. It was the biggest harbour in Normandy, and the main entry point for the Normans to their new possession of the Isle of England. I talked to some of the sailors and fishermen, but no one had remembered seeing Jack. How could they? Almost a year had passed since he, a simple mason, had journeyed through the busy town, a town with no memory other than that of the last king who passed through on yet another one of his violent conquests. Right. I kind of I lost track a little bit of just how much time had passed because right she uh when he left that was like before the pregnancy had even come to term let alone the following months. Maybe I was approaching this the wrong way. What had drawn him to France in the first place? The distance to Kingsbridge or something specific? What was my lead? My bad. Reflexive click during a during a pause in a sentence sometimes, but she's just saying what was my lead All the more reason to try the Abbey I suppose Barfleur was not any help because we are not Han on his heels. He were distantly behind him The say was tiny, but as it turned out worth the trip in the small Abbey Church of the Trinity, I met a monk who claimed to have talked to a man fitting Jack's description. He'd been fascinated by the Abbey's rib vaulting and had asked the monks countless questions about the place's construction. The monk apologized that he couldn't tell me where Jack had traveled next, but I didn't mind. I lay down to sleep on the floor of the Abbey guest house and, for the first time in almost a year, I felt relief. As I drifted into sleep, I hugged our baby tight and whispered into his tiny pink ear, We're going to find your daddy. I'm sure sleeping around the baby is great. Oh, Harfleur disappeared as an option. You, you must have to go there from the Barfleur port. There's the pilgrims of Mont Saint Michael in Le Mans. I guess we'll just explore. I don't know how she's eating. My father had once told me tales of the Mont Saint-Michel. 
Long ago, the archangel Michael had urged Hubert of Avranche to build an abbey on a lonely rock on the ocean by burning a hole into his head. They say one can go and see his penetrated skull on display in the church of his hometown. It was a windy day when I arrived, and the place was crowded with pilgrims, pilgrims and jongleurs. I remembered Jack's fascination with these tellers of stories. I spoke to one who was just taking a break. As it happened, he had indeed met Jack, although not in Mont Saint-Michel, but on a road heading east from there. Apparently, Jack had been hopelessly tracking Jongleur, who might have known his father, Jack Sherberg. But as he'd been gradually running out of money, he'd intended to look for work in Le Mans or Tours. That was about six months ago. I was catching up. We're getting surprisingly lucky, aren't we? All right. We're picking up on a path faster than I expected. I'm trying to remember whether or not she still had money to her name after everything went to hell with the church or if she or if it all dried up during that because she's eating somehow and I don't think it's like Kingdom Come Deliverance where they just wander around and pick up random food and it just works out Going to Le Mans reminded me of all the trouble I'd left behind in England 30 years ago, Le Mans had been conquered by the Plantagenet Geoffrey of Anjou, Maud's husband and although they'd held it ever since, other noble families kept on pulling at the city, like Maud and Stephen tearing at England. There was no sign of Jack, but I got news of a new kind of cathedral being built in Saint-Denis, just north of Paris. It was possible that Jack had gone there to learn from the craftsmen. That was, if he hadn't traveled further south, looking for work in one of the many churches in Tours, the hometown of Saint-Martin. Oh, that's a really large divergence from the path it's to risk going all the way there, as opposed to back to tour. We kind of have a lead? I can give it a go. North of Paris, I visited the construction of the great cathedral of Saint-Denis. It was far from finished, but already I could feel its magnificence. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. I assumed if Jack had come near Paris, he would have ended up here. Unfortunately, I was wrong. No one among the army of masons raising the cathedral of Saint-Denis had known him. My stomach churned when I realized that my strenuous walk to Paris had been for naught. Wait, we're walking? Our, our, our previous arrangement with the, uh... Is just, is just gone, I suppose? So that didn't work out at all. So we're, I guess we don't have a cart either, so I'm just... Doing bad things to us, and I guess we don't want to have any lead for, for Orléans. The pronunciation's throwing me off, the Saint-Denis, but... I, I guess it sounds cooler than saying Saint Dennis. You know, it's our cousin Dennis. You can tell we must be on some kind of lead because we're suddenly playing the video game part again. Because <laughs> they sure as hell weren't going to make large interactive environments for every place that's a dead end in the story. Like the ones Tom used to make back in Kingsbridge. Everything feels so far away now. Seems self-assured. Bit of anger on his lip though. Good day. Are you the master builder? What is it? I'm looking for a mason who may have passed through here. An Englishman with carroty hair. He calls himself Jack Jackson. Hmm, a redhead. Yes. Did you see him? He might have asked for work here. No, no, I I'm not looking for new masons. We're just doing repairs. Ah, uh, but was he here? 
No, never seen him. Now, stand back, woman. Something could fall on your baby's head. I was told he wanted to come here. Well, maybe he changed his mind. Are you sure you haven't seen him? I am. Are there other construction sites around Tour? Well, yes. It's a big town. And where would an outsider most likely find a job? Dunno. Ask around. May I talk to your workers? No, they're busy. And I can assure you they have nothing to say on that matter. Perhaps I'll talk to them once they've finished for the day. It would be a waste of time. <sighs> all right, all right, he was here. Was working for me. But I had to throw him out after two or three days. Why? Because he was all want, want, want. Let me redesign the roof. Let me make the nave lighter. All pretty ideas, but he never shut up long enough to do the work he was supposed to do. Shit, that man was almost as needy as my son when he was still a brat. Mm, he does know a lot about his craft. Well, I know masons like him. They grow up gifted, but without a moat of discipline in their guts. Can't work with someone like that. Do you know where he went next? No idea. Maybe to Limoges or Angoulême. Maybe even to La Rochelle. Seemed to have plans for every cathedral on God's green earth, but none for himself. I understand. I'll leave you to it then. Bon voyage. What a weird reveal. I lied for no reason. <laughs> I was like, oh, what's the... Like, oh, he's, he's coming clean all of a sudden. Okay, why was he lying in the first place? And it's like, oh, he just... He, he just... He just... He just fired him. And he's gone now. Just say that. <laughs> there, was, there was no grand secret. That was a weird reaction. Uh, it is accurate, though. Jack does seem to have no discipline in all ideas. He seems to want to be a designer as opposed to a worker. But the problem is he keeps getting hired as a worker. And you ha need to do that job at that point. We've got La Rochelle, a port town. Name. For another cathedral. And the artistic center of Limo. Limogus. Limoges. <laughs> if I go to the worst possible pronunciation, then it can't. Then it's like. It's somehow less embarrassing because I'm not trying. <laughs> It's not easy. Let's try the closest one, which I'm sure will totally work out for me like it has in the past. We had just left Tor when I suddenly felt dizzy. I stopped and made rest, trying to catch my breath, then lost my breakfast in a ditch at the side of the road. To my horror, our baby too had grown pale, his breath shallow like that of an old man. I tried not to panic. But the next inn was a long distance away, and we couldn't stay on the road where it was wet and cold. Uh-oh. All right, then. Back to tours. I'm not interested in killing our baby. Back in tour, the fever got worse. I remember people carrying me into a room, laying me on a bed. I tried to feed my baby, but after that, everything turned into a blur. When I awoke... Jack was standing next to my bed. He scolded me for following him. You know you could go anywhere you want, he whispered. Why be stupid and follow me? I tried to answer, but he just opened the window and jumped out, heading toward ancient Greece, or maybe all the way to Arabia. And in my feverish mind, I followed him. Um, I'm now making decisions to chase after Jack during an actual fever dream. So there's King's Bridge, there's Tours, and way out there's Arabia and Greece. Birthplace of philosophy, the cradle of civilization. We're going in the strangest direction here. 
Okay, let's try Arabia. <laughs> this is the decision that affects what ending you get more than anything else. The angrier I got. For years, I'd been fighting for my family. I'd committed myself to an oath to my father. I'd built up a business to sustain it and even married a man I despised so I could create a future for the people around me. I'd know nothing but my duty to the men in my life, while the man I was trying to find live a life of casual irresponsibility. He traveled the world on a whim to learn about mathematics and philosophy, while I had to raise the child he'd fathered. When could I ever do anything just for myself? I asked the world as I went on. Not wrong. Oh. A side of great failure, Kingsbridge. It's a hell of a trip back to make. You're just retracing your own steps for an incredible for all of Europe's length. I'd traveled in a circle all the way to the edge of the world and back, only to return to the place of our failure. With my eyes closed, I listened to the sound of ripping yarn and crumbling walls, and of coaches carrying good people away into a cloud of crimson dust. When the last moat had settled, I opened my eyes again and found myself in a dirty little room. An old maid was sitting next to my bed and smiled at me, then handed me my baby. Oh, dear God, he still looked so pale. I tried to feed him, but he refused. Oh, please, God, let him live. Don't punish him for my own sins. I gently caressed his head until finally he put his mouth to my breast and drank and drank more and more, becoming greedier with every swallow. We had both been spared. We rested one more day. Then I gathered my things and headed back to the cathedral to thank the Lord for his mercy.